like to start our service off with prayer just so we can invite the Lord's presence in to set the atmosphere for what's going to take place. Is that all right? We want everybody to posture yourself as we go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we reverence your holy name. Father God, your name is hallowed in all the earth. Father God, Lord, we lift you up. We bless you. We praise you because there is none like you. God, we come on today giving you thanks. Thanking you, Father God, for waking us up this morning. Thanking you, Father God, for clothing us in our right minds. Thank you, Father God, for the activities of our limbs. Thanking you, Father God, Lord, for all of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Father God, Lord. And even if there's something going on in our lives right now that isn't quite right, Lord, we're still alive. We're still grateful. We're still thankful for all that you've done, God. God, we want to ask, Father God, Lord, that you would stretch your loving arms around those who are praying with us on this morning. Father God, we know that the Thanksgiving season is not a happy season for everybody. For there are those who have lost loved ones. There are those who are in hospitals. There are those who are in nursing homes and other health care facilities, Father God, Lord, that are struggling. There are, there are those, Father God, that are struggling with mental and emotional health at this time, God. So, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you would reach your loving arms out and around those that might be struggling right now. Be whatever it is that they need you to be. Father God, if they need you to be a healer, if they need you to be a protector, Lord, somebody needs a financial breakthrough right now, Lord. Somebody doesn't know where their next meal is going to come from. Lord, be a provider, be a protector, be a healer, be a doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in the courtroom, Lord. Show yourself strong, Lord, in the lives of those who are praying with us on this morning. Lord, bless this service on today. Bless the musicians, Father God, Lord. Bless the psalmists on today, Lord. Bless your preacher on today, Father God. Give him clarity of mind. Give him strength in his body. Bring all things back to his remembrance that you might speak through him to your people and that your people might be made better. Father God, saturate this sanctuary with your spirit. Reach out even over the internet, Lord, and the airwaves, Father God, Lord. Going to the living rooms, Lord. Going to the kitchens, Lord. Going to the cars. And touch those that are streaming with us on today. Meet their need, Father God, Lord. Lord, we want to give you all glory, all honor, and all praise that is due your name. We count it done. We claim victory in the name of Jesus. And every heart said amen. 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 Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach it. In the fullness, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. Come 
on somebody Bless praise the, the lord God. in this place Hallelujah. come on somebody Hallelujah. praise the lord in this place Hallelujah. the bible declares it says Hallelujah. clap your hands oh ye people Hallelujah, God. okay the bible says your clap mind. your hands oh ye people Hallelujah. one more time for the holy ghost the bible says clap your hands oh ye people Lift up to God a shout of praise and worship. Come on, Bates Memorial. It's your time right now. Go ahead and move that coffee table out of the way. Hop out of your bed. Put a praise on your lips. Put a clap in your hands. Come on, somebody put a dance in their feet. Won't somebody praise the Lord right now for his goodness? Somebody praise the Lord for his greatness. Somebody praise the Lord because he brought you through and brought you out on today. Isn't he worthy to wear a high praise? Come on, shout out to God for all he has done for you. It's your time right now. Give God a worship and a praise. Amen. Come on, can you clap your hands at home? Everybody, everybody clap your hands. Help me say this. See what?
We praise God for being everything. Our joy and sorrow, our hope for tomorrow, a rock in a weary land. He is indeed our everything. Our scripture reading from today comes from the book of Psalms. Psalm 121. And it reads as follows. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Verse 8 says, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May God have a blessing for the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, my soul will worship you.
just for a quick second go on and give a worthy God a worthy praise regardless of where you may be in your home on your job in your car wherever you may be in your kitchen your living room in your bathrobe in your church clothes just pause right where you are and give a worthy God a worthy praise because he's worthy of your best praise every we thank and we praise and we reverence our Christ for the gift of another day. We thank God, our Father, for the opportunity to gather together, even virtually, for worship. Our pastor often reminds us that though the vehicle may be virtual, the worship is real. And we count it a joy and a privilege to join you wherever you may be and to join you together uh, in worship. Our pastor is out on today and he has called me on assignment today uh, and has actually assigned me a text. He does not often do that, uh, but assigned me a text today. So we thank and praise God for our pastor, for his work and for his leadership. And we pray that the Lord would cover him uh, wherever he may be. I'd ask if you pause with me for a moment with prayer, we'll prepare for our time of preaching with prayer. And after we have prayed, we'll turn to the assigned text and see what the Lord has to say. Godfather, in Jesus' name, 
before we thank you, before we ask you for anything. We want to pause, oh God, and thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord, first and foremost for just being God. For it was by your own divine plan and by your own grace and mercy and by your own choice that you touched us and woke us this morning. God, we know that it's not anything that we've done or anything that we've earned, but simply because you are a faithful and gracious God that we are here even now. And so we thank you, God, for being faithful. We thank you, God, for being merciful. We thank you, God, for being gracious. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather together as a portion of the body of believers to worship you in spirit and in truth today. And God, we pray now for you to send the preacher because it's preaching time. I pray, God, that you would decrease me even now. Hide me, O oh God, behind Calvary's cross so that you and you alone might be seen and so that you and you alone might be glorified. I pray, O oh God, if there's anything in me that would prevent you from doing what you desire to do, that you would search me, O oh God, and cast it out even now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I have studied and I have prepared but I need your power. And we pray, God, that you would fall fresh in this place even now. Give us, Lord, ears to hear and hearts to receive that which the Spirit shall speak. And let us be different, O oh God, at the end of this service than what we were at the beginning because of the power of your word. Now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And we count it done even now in the wonderful, matchless, precious, sweet name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And the people of God said together, amen. Amen. As most of you all know, our pastor is in the midst of a series called I Am. It's a chronicling of six I Am statements of Jesus, our Savior. And pastor has preached the first two. He has assigned me the third, which is found in John chapter 10. So I invite your attention to John chapter 10, and we will focus on verses 7 through 10. John chapter 10, beginning at verse 7, reading down through verse 10. And I'll be reading this particular passage from the New King James Version. Gospel according to John chapter 10, beginning at verse 7, reads as follows. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. For a short time today using John chapter 10 verses seven through 10 as our sermonic backdrop, we wanna raise as a subject for teaching and preaching, use the right door. Use the right door. And I would that you flank me with your prayers as we deal with the idea, use the right door. In August of this year, I began my 21st year in education. I've had the privilege to serve in three different school districts and in multiple capacities as a teacher, a coach, school administrator, and now a district administrator. And I can remember vividly my entry as a first-year English teacher at Owensboro Senior High School in Owensboro, Kentucky in July of 2001. I was greeted by my department chair, a veteran educator named Linda C. Kingsley. You had to have that C in there to get her name right. Linda C. Kingsley. She walked me that day in July to my classroom, gave me some curriculum materials, guided me on a tour of the school building, and even showed me my parking space in the parking lot. Uh, 
Linda was a gracious, seasoned educator and always full of sage wisdom. And as she showed me where to park my car each day, she also told me which door to enter. See, as a teacher, I didn't have keys to all of the doors of the school building, but I did have keys to the door nearest my car that would grant me quick access to my classroom. Fast forward some 15 years to when I was named the principal at Martha Lane Collins High School in Shelbyville, Kentucky. I was given keys to a vast 200,000 plus square foot building on a sprawling multi-acre campus, and I was also handled a detailed map. And I made it my business as the newly named principal to explore every square foot of that building. Uh, one Saturday, I had to run to the school from my house to retrieve some items from my office in order to complete a task. Uh, my twin children went along for the ride because they hadn't been inside the school building before. And so we pulled up to the building and parked in a front space. Parking lot and the school building were empty on this fall Saturday afternoon. My kids bounded like kids do with all of their energy out of the car and raced each other to the front door of the school. And when they reached the front door, they pulled it but found it locked. They called for me to come and open it. But I instead called them away from that door to a different door. See, there was an exterior entrance near my office to which I had a key. That was the door I intended to use. But my kids weren't aware of that door because they had never been that way before. And after I called them around to that door, uh, they came around. I used my key to open the door and we entered the building. And after entering the building, the kids asked to walk around and see the school, and so we began to walk. And as we walked, my ever-perceptive son looked at me and asked, Daddy, how did you know about that other door? And I replied, well, son, I'm the principal, and I have keys to all of the doors because I'm in charge of this whole school. And because of that responsibility, I knew that was the right door for us to use. See, I begin this preaching moment with that story because it illustrates for us the challenge of the human existence. Uh, in this life, we encounter many philosophies, many belief systems, many paths for living. We encounter many doors. But I've come simply to argue today, not real deep and not real philosophical, simply to argue today that we must be careful to use the right door. See, amid all of the options that life presents, we must live spiritually perceptive. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. See, all I'm trying to say today is that if we desire to live the abundant life that God desires us to live, we must choose the path and the door that God has identified in his word. Beloved, you must use the right door. Our text for examination today is the third in a series of six I am statements from our Lord. Uh, in these statements, he calls himself bread, light, the good shepherd, the resurrection and life, the way, the truth and the life, the true vine and here in John chapter 10, verses 7 through 10, he calls himself the door. Now, it's difficult to pull from this passage all that we need without first understanding its unique structure. See, Jesus had a habit of using what we call parables to teach people biblical truths. My father taught me that a parable is simply an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And we're familiar sometimes without even knowing it, 
with parables from throughout the gospel. I mean, parables like the lost coin and the lost sheep that shows us that God is willing to search far and wide for us when we stray from him. Or how about the parable of the Good Samaritan? A reminder of the call on every believer to tend to the needs of others regardless of who they are or what their station in life. Or what about the parable about pouring new wine into old wine skins? A reminder that God always desires to do a new thing in our lives and seeks to transform us into vessels worthy of carrying both his word and doing his work. Or what about the ever popular parable of the prodigal son, also known as the parable of the lost son? A reminder that God will welcome us back home when we stray and then realize the goodness and grace of God and choose to turn back to him. See, Jesus taught in parables to put biblical truths at a level that people could understand. And this parable In John chapter 10, verses 7 through 10, of Jesus as the door, digs deeply into a complete biblical truth and in turn becomes an allegory. It becomes an illustration that explores the struggle between good and evil while communicating godly truth upon which we can live. See, in the context of our text, Jesus is caught in a classic tangle with the Pharisees. Uh, Remember, the Pharisees are the religious zealots of the day who believe that salvation only came through strict observance of the traditional and written law. And frankly, these religious leaders were often found to be arrogant and self-righteous. And so Jesus, while in this uh, conversational tangle with the Pharisees, uses this allegory to communicate the truth of his presence on this earth. Using this allegorical approach, he allows himself uh, to reveal truth, to be seen and heard by those who have eyes and ears attuned to the master. Here Jesus uses the image of sheep, a sheepfold and a shepherd, a pastoral agricultural image that would have been common to the people of his day. See, the shepherd would herd the sheep during the day. And when night would fall, He would corral the sheep into an area with natural enclosures and then lay down at the entrance to serve as a gate or door which would keep predators out and keep the sheep in while ensuring the safety of the flock. So here again the words of our Savior in our text today in John chapter 10 verses 7 through 10. Then Jesus said to them again, them being the Pharisees, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So why would Jesus make the statement, I am the door? I'm so glad you asked. You're asking some good questions in here today. I see the literal translation from the Greek of the word thyra is door or gate. So Jesus speaks this allegory to make clear some things that the religious leaders of the day had gotten messed up. For here in John chapter 10, Jesus addresses three things. He addresses the topic of access. He addresses the topic of promises. And then he addresses God's reasoning all in relation to using the right door. The first matter that Jesus addresses here is that of access, specifically how we become part of the fold or of the church. Again, Jesus says in verse 7, I am the door of the sheep. And then he elaborates in verse 9, saying, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. I hear Jesus makes clear the fact that the only way into the sheepfold of God is through him. 
And this means that we cannot rely on our methods and strict observance of the law. Our only way into the family of God is through Jesus Christ. And see, we must have faith in Jesus' salvific work that as the great mediator between God and sinful man, we now enjoy both relationship and fellowship, both covenant and communion with the holy God. See, because our innocence was lost with the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, our only way into the kingdom of God is through the door of faith, which is Jesus himself. Remember that Hebrews 11.1 1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, the essence of faith consists of believing and receiving what God has revealed. Faith is trust in the God of the scriptures and in Jesus Christ whom he sent. And so this faith for salvation and access to the family of God is a personal trust in the lordship of Jesus Christ and in his death, burial, and resurrection. For Jesus was crucified for our sins and raised from the dead for our justification. Simply put, it was because of us that Jesus died. And see, this is why Jesus draws a clear distinction between himself and all who ever came before, as he mentions in verse 8. See, Jesus identified those who came before him as thieves and robbers, those false teachers, those false prophets, those false messiahs, and yeah, even the Pharisees. For all of these individuals gain power through illegitimate and manipulative means by preying upon the emotions and the needs of people, by presenting themselves as better than others, by keeping, by believing that they could keep the law perfectly and therefore be made righteous before God. But Jesus counters this idea by making it clear that man cannot save himself. Paul picks up on that refrain when he plainly says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Uh, beloved, we cannot earn salvation. Simply put, salvation is a gift from God to reposition us in right relationship with him so that we may do his will and live life eternally with him. And listen, beloved, we must be careful to use the right door to enter the kingdom of God. Because look, some will tell you that good deeds are it, but that's not the right door. Some will say keeping the Mosaic law perfectly is it, but that's not the right door. Some will say that it's reaching a heightened level of transcendental spirituality, but that is not the right door. Uh, some will offer Confucius and Buddha and Sun Yun Moon and Harry Krishna and Joseph Smith and even Muhammad, but they are all dead and are all not the right door. See, the only and right door to Christ's church and the family of God is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus alone is the door and our access to the Father and that's the door that you've got to use and see because Jesus is the only way I'll trust him with my heart and my life and that's why the songwriter could say my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and his righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand. Jesus speaks of himself as the door to make clear that he is our access to the Father. But the second issue that Jesus makes clear is not just this issue of access, but that of promises that we have because of membership in the sheepfold. 
The first promise that Jesus addresses is escaping sin. When he says in verse 9, I'm going to keep hitting these verses till you get them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. See, the connotation of salvation in this verse is clear to the believer. For we are not just saved to the kingdom of God, but we are saved from some things too. See, salvation in Jesus is being saved from sin, from its dominion in our lives, from its guilt, shame, and condemnation, and eventually from its presence. And this is good news for every believer, for every member of the family of God. For we know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And we also know that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. See, too many times we get excited and shout about going to heaven, but sometimes we need to stop and shout about being delivered. See, Jesus could have let us drown in a sea of sin and shame, but instead he saved us. He could have left us to our own devices, but instead he saved us. God could have let you languish in your sin, your mishaps, and your missteps, but instead he saved us. And child of God, you've got to learn to celebrate the fact that not only do you have access to the family of God, but the fact that God chose to save us from the penalty, paralysis, and presence of sin because he took our our place and paid the price that we should have paid but not only do we have the promise of an escape from sin we also have the promise of experiencing safety for Jesus gives the assurance that anyone who enters by him will be saved and protected when he says I am the door if anyone enters by me he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Uh, this expression doesn't mean go in and out of the family of God or in and out of the sheepfold, uh, but this phrase connotes going in and out, going out into the world from the sheepfold to do the work of our shepherd. And as believers, uh, we are not saved to sit. For our salvation in Jesus Christ is a call to action. It's a call to to serve. Jesus said it plainly in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, which we affectionately call the Great Commission. He says, all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go, therefore, go out, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. See, this call of Christ is an evangelistic call. And the success of this work does not rest on us or our skill or our perfection or our sagacity. But it rests in the power of he who has called us to do his work. And that's why we are called to be holy and separate. That's why we are called to be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special people. See, we are called to proclaim the praises of him who has called us out of this darkness and into his marvelous light. See, because we have been saved, we are called to testify to this same soul salvation. And look. I'll be real in here, witnessing to this dying world is a dangerous proposition. Uh, that's why we need his safety when we go out. For John told us in 1 John 3, 13, to not be surprised if the world hates us. And see, this world may be against you, but you can go in God's strength 
and in his name. See, when we step out into the world on God's assignment, we have his spirit and his covering with us. And he stands to welcome us back into the fold when we return because God stands ready as our protector. And truly, we are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come and when we go in his name. And as members of God's sheepfold, as members of the family of God, we experience his covering and his safety when we go out on his assignment. For his word abides with us wherever we are to remind us that the safest place to be is in his will for whomever is in the hand of the father no one is able to pluck them out but not only do we have the promise of escaping sin and the promise of experiencing safety but we also have the promise of enjoying supply Jesus says verse 9 I am the door if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. See, in Christ, we're saved from having to pay the penalty for our sins. We should have our lives impounded for eternity like a car to pay for our sins. But because Christ is a propitiation for our sins, our, our substitutionary sin sacrifice, our debt has been paid in full and absolved. And God has the nerve enough to add to this salvation a blessing, a blessing of a home. And see, the good news of the gospel is not just salvation from sin, but the promise of an eternal home in glory. And see, we can get excited about that trip across the shadowy river when we will see Jesus face to face. The old folks would say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Well, where does that church, where does that shout, where does that worship come from? It comes in the fact that Jesus saved us but his death, but he also gave us an eternal home in glory. And while I'm excited about the fact that God supplies an eternal home in glory, child of God, I'm also excited that God supplies right now in this life. See, membership in the family of God means that God provides for me. See, he'll provide a way through the wilderness by serving as a compass when I've lost my way. He will provide food when the cupboards are bare. He will provide comfort when I feel all alone. He will provide peace in the midst of confusion. He will provide beauty for ashes, provide the oil of joy for mourning, provide the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He will provide a way out of no way. See, the book says and my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And that somebody shout you in this service right there. For somebody in here, you know, if you would just stop and think a minute, you couldn't help but give God praise simply for providing for you. Go on, take a second and just thank him for healing your body. Thank him for being your shelter. Thank him for making a way. Thank him for opening doors that no man could shut. Thank him for meeting your needs. Thank him for doing the impossible in your life. Thank him simply for being God and God all by himself and superintending and orchestrating the affairs of your life. Thank him for supplying all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, I'll shout on this fact all day long that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to his power that works in us. Yes, we have access to the sheepfold through Christ Jesus. And we enjoy some promises because of that membership. But the final matter that Jesus settles uh, through this allegorical parable is God's reason for an open door. 
This is the fulcrum upon which this entire discourse balances. For notice what Jesus says in John chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Verse 5, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Earlier in this preaching, I explained this pastoral agricultural image that Jesus utilizes in this parable. What I did not say is that in ancient Palestine, sheep owners would sometimes hire a hireling to watch the sheep in a pen at night. These pens were caves, sheds, or open areas surrounded by walls made of stone or branches. And the hireling would sleep at the entrance to protect the sheep and then give the sheep back to the shepherd in the morning. See, Jesus makes clear that he chooses to take care of his sheep by getting them in the pen and by sleeping at the door to protect them. A hireling does this because of money. It's a contracted service. But Jesus does this because of his love for the sheep. And because Jesus is both the door and the shepherd, because Jesus is both Savior and Lord, he can call the sheep by name and lead them out to pasture to graze, feed, and be blessed after protecting them all night long. See, and that's the testimony of our senior saints when they sing that old song, God leads his dear children along. For it says, in shady green pastures so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the water's cool flow bathes the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley, in darkest of night, God leads his dear children along. Those sorrows befall us and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes, God leads his dear children along. Away from the mire and away from the clay, God leads his dear children along. Away up to glory, eternity's day, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood. Some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives the song in the night season and all the day long. And see, beloved, I get excited when I think about Jesus as the shepherd who protects his sheep and leads his sheep. For Jesus is the chief shepherd. Uh, who is the king of glory, who will return to reward his sheep with their place in glory. But I also get excited about Jesus being the great shepherd who was brought up from the dead to care for and, perf and perfect his sheep and prepare them for eternity in heaven. But beloved, I get most excited about Jesus being the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep and becomes the door by which we gain access, find the promises of freedom from sin, the experience of safety, and the enjoyment of his supply. Yeah, I would be lying if I said I didn't get excited because I get crazy excited because this means that Jesus is both the door and the doorkeeper and his whole reason for maintaining an open door is to let us in. See, Jesus had to come to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament. For the teacher's training class graduates in this service, you know that the Old and New Testaments are part of one complete Bible. See, a testament is literally a person's will that explains what is to be done with their personal belongings upon their death. 
And in order for the testament to be executed, the testator must die. See, access to the testament and to the decrees within the testament must be precipitated by a death. And so the Old Testament connects right relationship with God to the keeping of the law and all of its ceremonies and sacrifices for the atonement of sin. But the New Testament connects right relationship with God to the redeeming grace found in the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The New Testament therefore trumps the Old Testament because the greatest sacrifice was made to atone for our sins. And now we have a New Testament, a covenant of grace, because Jesus the testator died. See, the good shepherd came and died for our sins to open the door and give us access to the family of God and to access the fellowship. All you have to do is accept his gift of salvation. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ himself. All you have to do is use the right door. See, Jesus was born so you could come in. He gave himself to ministry so you could come in. He healed the sick so you could come in. He raised the dead so you could come in. He prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he prayed that prayer so you could come in. He was betrayed and arrested in that garden so you could come in. He was tried by a kangaroo court so that you could come in. He was beaten, mocked, and scorned so you could come in. He was crowned with a crown of thorns so you could come in. He shouldered an old rugged cross so that you could come in. He walked down the Via De La Rosa so that you could come in. He climbed the summit of Golgotha so that you could come in. He was nailed in his hands so that you could come in. He was riveted in his feet so that you could come in. He was pierced in his side so that you could come in. He gave up his life so that you could come in. He was buried in a borrowed tomb so that you could come in. He descended into hell and led captivity captive so that you could come in. And then he rose. He rose early on Sunday morning so that you could come in. And then he ascended into heaven so that you could come in. And one day he's coming back so that you can come in. And I'm so glad that Jesus did all of that so that I could walk through the right door and become a member of the family of God. And this no doubt is what David understood as the blessing of being included in God's sheepfold. See, that's what David said in Psalm 23. For with the Lord is my shepherd, he gives a relationship with I shall not want. He gives supply with he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He gives rest with he leadeth me beside the still waters. He gives refreshment with he restoreth my soul. He gives healing with he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He gives guidance with for his namesake. He gives purpose with yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He gives confidence with I will fear no evil 
he gives protection with for thou art with me he gives faithfulness with thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he gives discipline with thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies he gives hope with thou anointest my head with oil he gives consecration with my cup runneth over he gives abundance with surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life he gives a blessing and with I will dwell in the house of the Lord he gives security and with one word forever he gives eternity and because Jesus is both the door and the shepherd because Jesus is both Savior and Lord I'll live my life nestled right there between surely and forever surely God will keep me forever surely God will comfort me forever surely God will provide for me forever surely God will protect me forever surely God will cover me forever surely God will see me through forever surely goodness and mercy shall follow me forever because God has brought me in to the family of God I have some right now promises that I can stand on I'll stand on the fact that anything I ask in his name shall be done I'll stand on the fact that no weapon formed against me shall be able be able to prosper I'll stand on the fact that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I'll stand on the fact that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus I'll stand on the fact that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me and I'm so glad that God has made a way out of no way I'm so glad that he's turned my midnight into day I'll thank him because he freed me I'll thank him because he keeps me I'm so glad that he's given me another chance another shot to live my life to live it for him and child of God because we have used the right door we can go through this life with God's assurance come on grandmama and help me get in my seat it's a blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine I'm an heir of salvation purchase of God I'm born of his spirit I'm washed in his blood but perfect submission all is at rest I in my savior am happy and blessed I'm watching and waiting I'm looking above I'm filled with his goodness I'm lost in his love this is my story this is my song I'm praising my savior oh the day long this is my story I can't speak for you but this is my song I'm praising my savior I'm thanking my savior I'm blessing my savior I'm praising my savior oh the day long can I get a witness are there any 
today? Do you have a blessed assurance from God himself? Don't fool me now. Won't he save you? Won't he make a way? Won't he open doors? Won't he provide for you? Won't he meet your needs? Won't he make your enemies become your footstool? Won't he heal you? Won't he bless you? Won't he keep you in the midnight hour? Won't he deliver right on time? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Will he do it? Will he, won't he? If you know that he's able, say yeah, yeah. Because he's given you an assurance that he is the door. And not only is he the door, but he's the shepherd. And so he gives us access to the family of God. He gives us promises as benefits of this relationship that we escape sin that we experience safety, that we enjoy supply. Beloved, the reason he opened the door in the first place was so that you could get in. And today is your time. Today is your opportunity. Today is your chance to walk through that door. Jesus said plainly, behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's crazy. He is the door and he's standing at the door of your heart knocking, begging for you to let him in. He said, if you open that door and let me in, I will sit and I will sup with you. I will save you. It's not in what this world offers. It's in nothing that this society affords. But access to the family of God, to salvation full and free, comes through the right door. We want to offer this time as a time of invitation. There may be one that's joining us in this virtual service that does not know Jesus Lord, as your Lord and Savior. We have prayer partners stationed right now, right now to respond to you. Give us a call, 502 If you need to claim you. Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, call. Lord. They'll, they'll talk you through it. To show Repenting so of your sins, accepting salvation from Jesus Christ. And and that, he, that he came and he died say. and he rose and ascended into heaven. 502 636 Maybe you just need prayer today. You believe, and you're struggling, you're wrestling with life. Life is beating you up. They're going to sing it one more time to give you time to call. That line may be busy, but keep calling. Someone will answer. If you need prayer today to help you make it through Lord, life circumstances, call that I'm number 502 636 Make today the day that you respond. by the preach word on today why don't you go ahead and type amen in the chat put the lifted hand emoji in the chat just to signify how much uh, you appreciate the preach word on today and what God has done to transform your life on this morning we praise God for Reverend Dr. Joseph Ellison III and the preached word on today listen the Bible declares 
uh, when it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Amen. It's offering time uh, for all the Bates members. Uh, there's five ways to give offering and tithe and sacrificial giving. Uh, we may not be back into in-person worship right now, but we've never closed our doors and we're always transforming society and we need your help. We need your participation in the form of tithes and offerings to make those things happen. Uh, there's five ways to give right now. You can on cash app, you can uh, type in the Bates Memorial cash tag. That's cash tag. Bates Memorial and follow where God says lead and to give that way we can you can also give online at batesmemorial.com you click giving and follow the directions there and you can text vision vision and any amount to 73256 73256 and give that way or drop off your offering at Bates Memorial at any office time uh, during office hours and also snail mail still works you can mail your tithes and offerings in we're located at 620 Lambton Street in Louisville Kentucky 40203 were you blessed by the preached word on today come on uh, put the clap in hands uh, type a man do the dancing lady emoji if you were blessed by the preached word on today listen we don't want to live without blessing you on today of course we want to bless you make sure and pray over you and make sure you're safe we're going to do that after we uh share with you some goings-ons that's happening in this church why don't you look at this uh presentation and pay attention to see what's going on here at bates memorial What's up, Bates Memorial family and friends? Listen, this is the year that we're serving with a made-up mind, and we've got a lot that you can get involved in. Check this out. with the Bates Health Ministry, and November's health focus is being aware of lung diseases like COPD. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease refers to a group of diseases that causes airflow blockage and breathing-related problems. According to the CDC, 16 million Americans have problems breathing because of COPD. Even more suffer from this disease, but have not been diagnosed. While there is no cure, it can be treated and prevented. The main cause of COPD is tobacco smoke, exposure to air pollutants at home and in the workplace, genetic factors, and respiratory infections also play a factor. If you are experiencing frequent coughing or wheezing, excessive phlegm or mucus shortness of breath, and trouble taking a deep breath, you may have COPD. See your doctor for a simple test called spirometry which is used to measure lung function and detect COPD. For more preventative information, contact your doctor or contact the Bates Health Ministry at BatesHealthMinistry620 at gmail.com. Calling all health professionals and health enthusiasts. Your health ministry needs your help. Please contact us to find out how you can serve. This is Marita. I hope you're staying safe and stay well. Signing out, giving you your November's health tip. That's what's going on here at Bates Memorial, and we want you to get involved. Hey, man, we want to thank everyone for uh, participating, for joining us in worship on today. Uh, we pray that God transformed and has transformation power over your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you said that you are the door to the 
glory of our God. Heavenly Father, we pray that there's someone here that is uh, looking for that door and seeking it in you, God. We pray that you order their steps. Guide them along the path that they can be opening that door to you right now, God. And uh, Heavenly Father, continue to bless those who are sick, shut in God that needs transformation power and guidance in their everyday life. Now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Go in peace.